Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we're doing something a bit unique. I'm drawing inspiration from a lot of places. I, to give you my train of thought, um, I was a big fan of Stargate SG-1, and in that show there are a lot of Egyptian uh, incorporation into the design and the enemies and all those things. Uh, and I thought it would be cool to kind of make my own take on a character that is portrayed in it as well as a lot of video games out there. Any having to do with ancient Egyptian stuff pretty much has this particular god in it. Um, I decided that I was going to make my own Anubis head uh, and kind of put my own spin on how I think it would look. I got about halfway through the build and realized I couldn't see out of it, so I had to make some modifications. So you'll see me doing those things as well, uh, just so that I could see when wearing the helmet. So today we are going to make an Anubis head from my imagination, not really historically accurate in most ways, but we're just going to have fun with it. Let's get to building. So I had this idea in my head about what it would originally look like as I went through the process of making this build. I quickly realized I had to make some adjustments. You'll see my template change a little bit later from where I added lines and cutouts to accommodate for these modifications. I will make sure to explain what the lines mean on the template and try and point them out when they come up in the video. For this build, I am using some 6mm foam for most of the build. Trace the template onto your materials and and cut it out. I needed to heat up the head base to give it a little roundness. Heat up the foam and then push it against something round. It's pretty simple. I'm using a globe that goes over my back porch light. Usually I use 6mm for helmet bases because it's flexible enough to take a curve, but at the same time sturdy enough to support the shape. Now time to start tacking everything together. I laid down a layer of contact cement on the edges and give them a second to set up. First I close up any darts, then using my registration marks I work my way around the structure. My head base starts at the brow and finishes around the under jaw towards the mouth. I glue halves up separately so it doesn't sit for too long, then I join them together. The nose, mouth, and top 
are glued into place, then I join the two halves together. Trust the registration lines and try your best to keep the outside flush when lining parts up. This will save you time in the sanding later if you don't have to correct seams that are too proud from the base. Because I am making this up as I go, you will start to see extra panels and reference lines added to the template. These orange lines here are an example of that. I added those lines once I figured out where I wanted the jaw piece to align. So I think with a few simple modifications, this pattern could easily be made into other animals. The ears consist of two pieces, a front and a back. The back piece needs to be heat formed in order to accommodate the curve towards the front. I also sanded down the tips on the back so that there were enough room on the inside to join the two pieces together. Remember parts with an R mean that that's the right side of the object. To get the left side, you need to place the template label side down and trace it again. Otherwise, you'll end up with two right ears. I held my ears up on the top and moved them around a little bit till I liked the positioning and then I traced that onto the base itself. Lay down a layer of contact cement on the base and the ears and then stick them together permanently. The headdress took a while to figure out the template for, but I think it ended up in a good shape. Same as the other parts that I've done so far, contact cement the edges and then use the registration lines to help you line up the parts. Just like the ears, I positioned the part on the base, figured out where I wanted it to lie, then I marked it with a sharpie, put down contact cement on both the parts, and stuck them together.
For the detail trim, I used some 18 millimeter EVA dowels cut in half, some two millimeter and four millimeter EVA cut into strips of various widths. My rationale for where I placed these things was primarily areas that were flat with little detail. You could also use this as an opportunity to hide your seam lines or crimes from your mistakes. There is no right or wrong to it. I used some references from hieroglyphics, video games, and movies to get some ideas on the detail work. To add some interest to his ears, I took my wood burner with a rounded bit and burned in ridges. Notice I did not go all the way to the edge. I'm planning on adding some more rounded trim to outline the edges. You kind of have to think a step or two ahead when coming up with the ideas on the fly sometimes. I added some forehead details with an onk, I'm, I'm guessing that's how you say it, on the top. Adding more layers and using various techniques can give your piece interest and make it seem more authentic. I could have gone a little further with this, but I kind of had to pull myself back sometimes so I don't obsess over it. You don't want to go overboard also. Here's another example of me making adjustments to my original design. Originally, I had planned for the helmet base to sit on the forehead and the jawline would actually go to my jaw. After arranging certain parts, it became a full helmet instead, so I had to figure out a way to see in the helmet. I thought it would be kind of a cool idea to cut out panels in the snout and get some tinted visor material on the inside. So if you decide to make this, you could already have these sections marked off ahead ahead of time. Now I made a decision to add a cobra to my Anubis head. The Egyptian cobra symbolized sovereignty and divine authority, so I thought it was fitting. Plus I saw it in a lot of the hieroglyphs that I looked at of Anubis. To make it, I tapered down the tail to a point using a one inch EVA dowel as a starting point. To form the head, I tapered down a groove just below his neck and then flattened the sides out a little bit to allow for the hood to be attached. I attached the hood to the sides, then I sanded it a little bit to transition the pieces to blend it together into the snake body. To simplify the snake scales, which would be insane to try and do by hand individually, I took a wood burner and ran diagonal lines down the back, then a second layer in the opposite direction. This makes a decent diamond pattern that doesn't take a long time to put down. Make sure anytime you are sanding or burning EVA that you wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area, the dust and the fumes are not things you want to breathe into your lungs.
two coats of Plasti Dip. My paint scheme for this will be metallic blue, gold, and black Platifex acrylic paint. After two coats, it was way too shiny for me to have to dirty up, so I, I just kept it. I painted each part in a base color. The jackal's head was black, the jaw was blue, and the headdress was gold. Then I came back over the top of those with the different colors to add more interest and bring out the detail work. Most of the ancient Egyptian burial rituals centered around preparing people for the afterlife. And because of this, they would adorn them with precious metals and jewels. So I thought I would give mine a little faux gems and some of the details to make it look a little more authentic. I just super glued them into place, trying my best not to get the glue on the front of the gems. My last step was to glue in the tinted visor panels on the inside of the snout. I'm using some Hobart face shield replacements I bought online. It's a good sturdy material but still thin enough that you can cut it with scissors. So I just hold it up to the area and cut out the shape that I need. I allow for at least a quarter of an inch or more on each side so that it gives me a ledge to glue to. I use hot glue instead of super glue because super glue hazes up this material. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. I know it's not dirty like typical much props things are, uh, but after I got done putting on the, the metallic paints, I kind of found it hard to cover it up with dirt. It's just, this is only two coats of plaid and it is very, very shiny. So I think I'm gonna leave it as is. Um, the great thing and the bad thing about coming up with your own design for things is you kind of have to problem solve things as you go and some things may not be inevitably clear in the process when you start so midway through the build i realized hey my eyes sit right here which would be on my animal's forehead i can't put a hole there so i compromised and put the recesses in the snout so that i could see out of the snout instead um, so it is what it is. I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, if I was to add anything to this, I'd kind of like to put some, some EL wire in some of the recesses just to kind of make it a little futuristic. Um, I may go back and do that at some point, but maybe you'll try and make this build yourself and impress your friends with your ability to turn ancient Egyptian design into something that's relatively historical. Yeah, I'm sure they'll let me know in the comments. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them, much props. I think it's kind of funny that the uh, paint scheme actually matches my uh, custom blade that I made. So this will be my scepter. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>